I'm back. Hey, how you doing? It's good to see you. I'm terribly sorry about the delay in uh, getting back to you with our next our next lecture. And uh, before I begin, I, I also wanted to thank you for reading uh, what for some people might be um, challenging material, explicit material. Um, I was saying last time, I hope I was saying it last time, I don't remember, but um, when you're studying literature, it's not like you're studying sociology or statistics. Um, literature deals with the most um, intimate, the most hidden, uh, and the most profoundly uh, curious, profoundly curious elements of the human psyche, and very often that's tied to human sexuality. And so, though this is a class in Chicano literature, and some people might get into their heads that Chicano literature is about uh, the agrarian movement, uh, bracero program, working class folk. Um, it is. It's about all those things. But it's, it's also about the consequences of desiring, of having desires, and of acting out on those desires. So the next couple of weeks we're going to be dealing with volatile material, adult material, and it's going to take um, focus and um, maturity to uh, get to the heart of these, of these works. That said, um, we're dealing with some really gifted, gifted, talented uh, actors. Miriam Gerba is the bomb. She is just um, amazing. Just Google her right now after I finish. Look up her stuff. She's a teacher. I mean, so she's down and brown, working in the community. But she's an artist. She's a performer. She's a comedian. She's a cabrona. She's a loca. She's beautiful. Uh, and she's so talented. Just one of our best uh, contemporary American writers. Um, a very honest and down-to-earth writer, very generous, too. I've met a lot of writers and artists in my life, and they're not all people you want to have a drink with. But um, Miriam Gerva is special. She's, uh, she's truly different. So anyway, let's turn, to the first, um, let's turn to the first story, if I can find my glasses. Here we go. And um, there's only two books, two stories in the collection, right, that I'm having you read. Uh, the collection is called Dahlia Season, and I'm having you read, for sure, Cruising. Uh, it starts on page nine. And Dahlia Season, the novella, same title as the book, but it's a novella inside this collection uh, that starts on page 65. You can read the other stories, too. They're, they're great. They're great, great stuff. So, um, so cruising, cruising, cruising is a really great story. It's a, it's a story about camouflage. It's about being somebody that you are not. It's about pretending to be another gender, being another person, being another, uh, in another state of mind. And it's about what it says it's about. It's about cruising. When you cruise, you are on the prowl. And you are on the prowl for pleasure, for diversion, for excitement, and maybe for a little bit of danger. And it all takes place in Long Beach. Cruising is a story very much uh, the, that draws from the cultural richness of uh, Long Beach. Um, all its races, all its classes, all its, all its people, and all its sexual subject positions. And so um, the short story is very graphic and very honest about what it might be like to go out in the night in Long Beach and cruise. Um, there's a tradition of this in Chicano literature. Um, you may have heard of a novelist, um, uh, maybe Professor Nunez has mentioned him by the name of John Ritchie, a very, very famous American writer who happened to be Chicano and who happened to be gay, very gay. And his works, for ages, for decades, uh, 
until Juan Bruce Novoa, a critic, wrote a piece, a very important piece on Ritchie. Uh, his works were very much embraced by uh, gay readers across the United States. Chicano readers were a little slow, a little slow on the uptake. We're too Catholic, we're too conservative, we're too conservative. <clears throat> and for many years, the Chicano literary community mimicked the Mexican-American community across the United States in being conservative, limited, bracketed, closeted. And so uh, John Ritchie's City of Night, which was a very important novel in the middle of the 20th century in American literary history, was not so much recognized as a Chicano novel because its main character was gay, was cruising, was out for a lot of fun, had a lot of sexual partners, and so um, it was. It was. It was just not universally adored. Uh, cruising is by uh, Miriam Gerba is almost like an homage, a rejoinder to John Ritchie. This time written by a uh, Chicana, Mexicana, Latina, uh, lesbian writer, and it's her point of view. And the interesting thing in cruising is that the main character is is a girl who's out cruising. Uh, uh, in the sexual subject position of a gay male. So, very, very interesting story. So what I love about the story, I love about Gerba, is her writing, right? Um, for instance, the bottom of page 10. Uh, read along with me. To escape from the sun, a lot of people crowd under the pier. It's like there's a little city down there trying to stay cool. There's all kinds of people down there. Families, fags, lovers, bums, drunks. Everybody huddled under the pier, trying to get wet and avoid sun. That's their common bond. That, and they're not rich people. Not the kind of California people you see in movies, but the real kind of people who live and breathe and sweat and die in California. I love that line. Not the kind of Californ California, sorry, California people you see in the movies. The movies are everywhere in California. Go Hollywood. Go West, young man. And so writers have to war against motion pictures. It's almost as if uh, the writer conceives of themselves portraying a world that is more real because the world of facades, Hollywood, is ubiquitous. Ubiquitous is a very big word. It means everywhere. And Hollywood contaminates, saturates the space of California. So that a writer like Gerba has to, in her descriptions, push against that. Um, depict in another way. All right, let's go on. Um, I'm going to read a passage. It's, a, it's adult. It's adult, so if you don't like it, turn down the volume. It's on page 11. She'd been telling us about the Randy Kraft murders that had gone down. In, um, in Long Beach. And uh, that's the thing about Gerba. Gerba, she's, this, she's fascinated by cultural phenomena, memes, and a serial killer is kind of a fascinating, horrible uh, meme. But um, page 11, she writes in the middle of the page, at night, the fags like to fuck under the pier. I come out here with my friends sometimes and get drunk at night and listen to waves. And the pier looks like a scene out of a John Retchy novel. All sorts of hot, clandestine fucking. It's not like as a literary critic I have to be like a real genius and say, Oh, Gerba has been influenced by the writing of Retchy. No, no. She puts it in the book. She creates this allusion, creating an intertextual network between Dahlia Season, between Cruising, and the works of John Ritchie. Because the one thing you have to know about literature is it is a tradition. There's a continuity. There's a connection. One generation of writers affects another. It may well be that Gerba's writing influences your uh, own inventiveness, your own uh, willingness or wish to create some new story. Um, maybe not. Maybe not. You never know. But here in the short story, She's doing what most literary artists do, and that's uh, using allusion, A-L-L-U-S-I-O-N, not illusion, 
There are illusions also, but she uses allusion as a way of connecting her universe to an ongoing literary universe that includes John Ratchie, which is, which is pretty important, pretty important in the reading. Now, we're reading this and maybe we just stumble over it. Who's John Ratchie? And we don't even have time or make the time to look them up. But when you're really studying a writer, it pays great dividends to look up stuff that you're not sure of where it comes from. All right. She's really good at um, giving you a sense of place, a sense of space in um, Southern California and Long Beach. If you've ever been, let me drive down to Long Beach today, you'll see it. But on the top of page 12, she writes, The Queen Mary is docked nearby. It's one of the city's biggest attractions. Right now, they're auditioning monsters for the haunted boat show that they have every year at Halloween. They decorate the boat all creepy, and it costs 20 bucks to get on and see the show. They say the boat really is haunted. There are things floating through it, walking the halls. The Spruce Goose used to be parked in a hangar nearby, and some people say that Howard Hughes's ghost wanders around it. You can hear his footsteps clicking and clacking against the bare concrete floor. She's really giving you a sense that you're walking around Long Beach, that you're part of this scene. Now, she's going to take you to a subterranean scene very soon, you know beachside bathrooms at night. Kind of gnarly. But that's not all of Long Beach. Long Beach is all these spaces. The Queen Mary and the Queens, you know, underneath underneath the docks. Um, uh, very, very uh, interesting, uh, what do you call it, um, expanse of cultural phenomena that Gerba as a writer is, is interested in. Um, the end of the story is very um, uh, moving, uh, upsetting. It, it depicts a sexual encounter between an Anglo young man uh, and our protagonist, uh, who may well very be Latina. Uh, she's female, but she's pretending to be a male. She's pretending to be a man. And the thing about cruising is that it's a story uh, about camouflage, about not just clothing, but persona. Imagine your persona. Um, let's take it back a step. The person you are with your parents is not the person you are with your friends. The person you are with a lover is not, the, it's not how you act, like, I don't know, with your clergyman or something, with your banker, unless they're your lover too. Um, <clears throat> we take on personas. Uh, nosotros que podemos hablar español. Nuestra persona en español no es igual con who we are when we speak English. It's almost as if we have different identities connected to language. Um, cruising is very much about going out on a limb and experiencing, in this case, sexuality, passion, hedonism but from a different persona. Uh, what makes it doubly interesting is that Gerba, as the writer herself, is taking on another persona. Now, maybe this story is connected to lived experience. At one of the readings that she does in and around L.A., you can go check her out and ask her. Um, but I think what's really beautiful in cruising is this willingness to simultaneously explore the mind of a character who is experimenting with persona, but also at a metatextual level, at like a hyper, you know, post-structural, psychoanalytic level, we also see Gerba cruising as a writer, pretending, playing, uh, playing make-believe, uh, and she invents a new persona. All right. That's all I got to say about cruising. I'm going to be very interested in hearing your responses to uh, Gerba's writing. I'll be back in a few minutes.